One of the most common questions I'm asked and have been asked by you is to help people summarize the difference between the sun placement, the moon placement, and the ascendant placement. So for those of you who have asked, I'm going to explain that now. So here's a quick uh, summary of the differences. I like to think of the sun really as your core character, a series of traits that you've built up and that you really feel you own in, in your later years. Very different from the moon, which tends to be more about your needs and your habits, and the ascendant, which is what I call the meet and greet personality. Now, the big three, um, sometimes uh, uh, people feel they're interchangeable. Um, sun in Aries, moon in Scorpio, same as sun in Scorpio, moon in Aries, and it really isn't the same at all. They, the th big three are the most important, um, I think, areas of the horoscope and certainly the ones that um, lead us into understanding the rest of the birth chart. Sometimes the sun has been called the destination where we're heading to, the moon has been called the baggage, what we carry with us on the destination, and the ascendant has been called the vehicle that takes us there, that gets us there. And uh, so that's, that's a great analogy for me, really, because the sun is that uh, process of our development, our development of character, what's important to us. In many ways, your sun sign and your sun complex, which I'll explain more in upcoming webinars, um, speaks of your type of heart, as well as where your heart is. Uh, what you love most, what's most important to you. It's also what we were born to be. And the sun really is that key definition of vocation. Not so much job, but really calling. Uh, we could call ourselves an astrologer, but really underneath that is a, a calling either to help people, analyze people, communicate with people. So beneath every job, there seems to be a core vocation, and the sun really describes that very well. And when I say the sun complex, I mean not just the sun sign, but its house position and major aspects to it, particularly the conjunction, the square, and the opposition. Now, those of you who have read my work or listened to it in the past, you'll know that I, I warn people to follow your sun rather than wallow in the worst of the opposite sign. And I'll say more about that later, of course, in other uh, webinars. But really, we should, in a sense, be in the process of, of uh, following the sun placement, becoming that, striving towards that. Um, doing that brings us happiness, fulfillment, uh, recognition sometimes. Um, and what often happens is that people don't do that. They wallow in the very worst of the opposite sign. So you find uh, Virgos who are there to perfect a craft and to really, um, uh, you know, really to focus on perfectionism, focus on doing a very thorough job. Sometimes sit in the very worst of Pisces where they have, they lack discipline or they, they feel um, uh, used and abused, etc. That's the worst of Pisces, not really what Pisces is about, of course. So I always say, follow your sun, become who you were born to be. It's the beacon, it's the shining light in the horoscope. Now the moon is equally as important, and as we know, the sun and moon from the earth appear at times to be the same size. So in our charts, they are equally as important. But the moon goes deep. The moon really is primarily what we need, the reigning need, as Noel Till uh, used to call it. It's also the things that um, our gut reactions, our habits, the things that we uh, run to when we don't feel safe. I call it the backpack because as we're heading towards our sun, trying to become who we were born to be, the moon is what we would put on our backs in a backpack as we travel around. Now, if you're a moon in Gemini, that might be books, information, maps, a couple of cell phones. Uh, if that moon is in Virgo, um, the backpack would probably be filled with miniatures of many, many different things, just in case there's any uh, illness, upset, surprise, etc. So think of the moon as your backpack. What would you put in it? Uh, the moon, its sign, the complex, the aspects of the moon say very much um, about 
our daily temperament, what we're like at home. And as we get into a routine at work, what we need at work and what we like at work. You might have the moon in an air sign, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. Uh, and you'll need a lot of space at work, a lot of air, uh, an ability to communicate with people. There needs to be some socializing that's going to be important. So the moon really needs to be fed. I often say, you know, feed your moon daily, strive towards the sun, but feed your moon daily. The moon can also be those gut instincts, the early feelings that we had. And so they're linked to some way, in some way to childlike qualities or the immature side of us, uh, the um, putting the thumb in the mouth and needing a bit of comfort, needing a bit of care and cuddles. And certainly the moon shows the, the child in us, but fundamentally your moon sign shows how you were loved and how you learned and were taught to love. Very different from the sun, which is that sense of striving, heading towards something. The moon is who we are daily. It's often said that the moon uh, tends to, the moon sign it tends to show up more in childhood as well. We tend to be more our uh, moon signs when we're um, growing up. The ascendant, in a way, the moon and the ascendant signs say so much about how people perceive us, what we might call our characteristics. Uh, the moon is those deep ones we don't share until we feel safe, but the ascendant is the meet and greet personality function. That sense of what mask or persona do we put on in order to negotiate the world, to meet people, to connect with them, to get on with other people, to, to negotiate our way through all the different trials and tribulations. The ascendant, of course, is what is um, rising at the moment of our birth in the east, that area of the sky, whichever sign we call it. Um, and it speaks of what, um, what appears. So it has a link to our appearance, of course. Um, but more importantly, it's about our impressions um, of the world, people's impressions of us. Our ascendant sign says so much about how people see us personality-wise. The sun, I said, is character. The moon has that behavior, behavioral quality, and the ascendant is very much more about personality. And you could say that the whole chart is your lens, how you see the world, but particularly the ascendant. When we, what we expect when we encounter other people and how we go out our front door. So it's very much about our personal approach to life, and of course, not just the sign, but any planets that are conjunct or making hard aspects to the ascendant, like opposition and square. So it's how we approach the world, it's our viewpoint, it's our lens, which means really our ascendant is our particular view of reality, how we see the world, how we make sense of that. We use the other planets to then digest that information through the moon, emotionally, through Mercury, uh, intellectually. But that ascendant is that doorway that we enter into and the one in many ways that people recognize as we leave our front door and go into the world. So the sun is the character, that core sense of what's important to us, what we've collected, what we stand for in many ways, our personal identity eventually that we grow into. The moon is very much more about our behavioral patterns, our gut reactions, our needs, and the ascendant very much the personality that we exude when we want to meet people, socialize or connect with the world around us. Um, okay, well, I hope that's been interesting. I hope it's clarified some things and uh, look forward to answering your, your questions uh, coming up. Take care of yourselves.